from here on the east coast of Arkansas, Shock Dog Sam, another episode of this bailing war engine, and we on the reassembly now. Now let's get on with it. But first, let's talk about these cylinders. The replaceable cylinder sleeve, one of the few engines that was made that had a replaceable cylinder. It was a big selling point for this engine. Just a little uh, comparison, a little show and tell, if I might. This is the uh, one we're going. We're going to install this. This is the the reason for the episode. We we want to put this in the engine. It's a fairly decent. It's a fairly decent cylinder sleeve. You know, nowadays you don't have a choice. If it's bad, it's bad. The, these can be resleeved, and it's not that big a deal uh, for a machine shop. If you've got big enough equipment, it's kind of it's a lot easier to re-sleeve this cylinder, bore it out, press a sleeve in there, and then turn that to the piston size. Uh, you can bore these out and put an oversized piston in there. Kind of complicated uh, oversized piston is. One's not available. The comparison is this, if you measure them, this one right here measures out... Uh, three and five eighths and the this is the this one is the igniter model and immediately immediately you can see the difference there it's about a all quarter inch longer just looking at it quite a bit smaller in size to the to the point of being three and a quarter the um, and I just wanted to bring this attention to you that the igniter model, the crankcases apparently, looking at them, they're the same, but but they are different in the sleeves. One will not interchange. It's let's not tarry any further. Uh, and 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 and, and I will tell you some. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, copyright, or I would have. Uh, Ricky Lee Jones, the music uh, there in your shop right there. Uh, Rick, I hear tell that Ricky Lee Jones has got a new uh, CD out. Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with a little Ricky Lee Jones in the background. You know, copyright, I can't have it playing, so I'm just going to pass that on to you that uh, the the new Ricky Lee Jones cassette there, you know, just shove it in there and put it up on about medium. Uh, you'll get some work done behind that. You know, Chucky's back in town. <laughs> okay, uh, with that little uh, public service announcement, let's get back to the project at hand. Now, this is the spark plug gasket, and this is the igniter gasket. And and you can see, if you just compare them up, you can see how much, it's like an eighth inch or so, or a little more than that, on the bigger size out there. And then if you look at the inside, it's about, you know, a, a quarter or three sixteenths, something like that, smaller. Just, uh, and this is, uh, now, uh, there was some uh, co couple of comments. Might as well clear them up as we go uh, about gaskets and um, a, a, an old hot rod trick, especially on a flat on a flat head Ford V8. One of the old race car tricks was to put a thinner head gasket on that, and you could raise the compression. Well, you can do the same thing on these old engines, and and I have built these M's. The a couple of trick running M's that I have built, and I actually put a head gasket in there, a quarter inch thick, uh, to lower the compression. I wanted it to run a extremely low compression. And if you want to fool around with compression, do it with either shaving the head, put it in a metal machine, cut it down, or either gaskets. Okay, let's get on past that. O rings. These are standard. Uh, off-the-shelf o-rings if you own one of these engines then you will know what size to buy 
And all you do is put the micometer on the outside of this right here. And put the, uh, the caliper, whatever, how you want to measure this outside of this right here. And then you measure in the block, you measure the, the bigger diameter of that hole. Okay, this this is just off the shelf down there at the parts store. And, and, and the way you know if you got the right ones, if it goes on here and that's tight. Okay, that's a tight fit. Okay, when you put this in the block, then the hole in the block is smaller than the outer diameter of this. So you're compressing it on the outside and on the inside both. The only thing is the groove that this O-ring fits in is wider than this O-ring. The repair manual for these engines, McCormick Deering, and these were made by International Harvester Company. Uh, some of them, you will, uh, the nameplate on them will be International. Uh, some of them will be McCormick Deering, same engines, uh, either spark plugs or igniter. The, uh, and this is pretty much the same thing on the bigger horsepower. The, and in the, uh, this, this O-ring right here. Now, a few years ago, I ordered in some O-rings. Th these right here, right here they are. I ordered these in, and they're homemade. These are homemade O-rings, and and the way you know that is is it was a big old roll of this neoprene stuff, whatever it is. It was a big roll of it, and they cut it off you know, with a razor blade, and then they glued it back together. Which there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly okay. Oh, it's done a million times a day across around the world. It's perfectly okay, but it's totally unnecessary to go to this right here when you can uh, when you can secure. Uh, O-ring down at the parts store, uh, and I bought. Anyways, I ordered. I got these, and and I, I once I got them in, I said I'm not going to use that, and so I keep them for show and tell. Uh, order you one of these to have it, uh, you know, something to go by. Uh, don't you know anything? Anything that's available out there, buy you one of them. I, I'm not. I'm not saying not to buy one. I'm just saying you don't have to use it. Anyways, we got this right here, and this is what we're going to use. Okay, to fill up that extra space in this right here I am going to use oh you can get a great big package of these old rings oh there's 25 in that package there uh, <laughs> I'll use them up though don't be misled that I'll have any extra ones anyway now back to the subject uh, the bigger gap in here now what I am going to do and I'm a totally against I am totally against silicone on an antique gas engine, just kind of, you know, generically, just, there, there's just no use for silicone there, except in this place right here. I am going to, what I do, and we're going to put the camera over there and show it up close, uh, I will fill up the groove in the crankcase with silicone. And, and I'm also going to put just a little bit right around the front right here because this is a water, I'm, what we're trying to seal up here is a water leak. There, there won't be any oil, there's no compression on this. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a compression, and, and this, this right here, supposedly when metal gets hot and, and cools down, it, it expands and contracts. And this, this O-ring will run when we get it in that block, it, it'll be somewhere, yeah, you can tell where the other one was at, but it'll be somewhere about like that right there in a straight line. But it'll be right there, and, and, and when this heats up, it'll, it'll, it'll expand ever, ever such much a little bit, but it does. So I'm going to use some silicone here, very little, and some silicone right here. And and what I'll do is is I'll put a little extra on here, and when I push this in the in the cylinder, that will push. You want to use too much, and that will push that silicone out here and make a bead around here. Okay, tomorrow sometime you come by, and you can get a hold of that with a long pair of tweezers and just pull it off of there. You don't want to try to wipe that away at the present while it's still gooey, or just make a total mess. Let's uh, let's let's put this in there, and we are going to run a hone in here. And another thing about that hone, well, let's put it in there, and then we'll talk about that.